Okay, I guess being recorded. Uh, so the, the, the work is on um, electrons in two dimensional artificial uh, lattices of uh, about 10 nanometer in, in period. Uh, so first I would like to thank my collaborators, um, Professor King Fan Mack, uh, who is a very long-term collaborator. Uh, the real heroes actually are the uh, postdocs and uh, students uh, in the group, in particular two former postdocs, Yang Shi and uh, Yang Hao Tan. And you will see their contributions later uh, in my talk. Um, our experimental work uh, was uh, guided by theoretical insight and uh, modeling of uh, several um, colleagues, um, Alan McDonald from UT Austin, Vite Elsa from Cornell, Liang Fu and his postdoc Yang Zhang from MIT. Uh, we got our excellent tungsten sunlight bulk crystals uh, from the uh, Columbia crystal growth team led by uh, Jim Hong, um, and we got uh, boron nitride crystals from Japan. Uh, so uh, the plan for today, um, I will uh, first uh, refresh your memory of uh, the Hubble model to describe electron correlation. Um, and then um, I will introduce uh, 2D semiconductor Molly super lattices as uh, a realization of um, uh, Hubbard and some other, um, you know, many body uh, model in, in two dimension. Uh, and then I, I hope I'll be able to uh, give you a, a few examples to show that how this new platform can help us to understand some longstanding problems in condensed matter physics and also to discover new faces or new phenomena. Okay, um, first, uh, let's just uh, consider uh, a lattice of atoms uh, with one non-degenerate um, electron level. Um, then uh, the uh, Hamiltonian um, of, of this system is very simple. It, it's, it consists of one term that describes hopping from one site to a neighboring site um, by this uh, hopping matrix element T. Um, the solution uh, is uh, a band formation. Um, so the bandwidth is determined by the hopping parameter T and also the number of nearest the neighbors. Um, if we have one electron per site, um, that means this band is half filled because of the spin uh, degree of uh, freedom. Uh, we can have two N uh, states um, for N electrons. So this system um, is a metal. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, the separation between the atoms. Uh, of course, you know, this is not a physical. Uh, what's missing here is a Coulomb interaction uh, between the electrons. So the simplest way to include that is to include uh, this uh, repulsion energy U, the price you need to pay by putting two electrons on the same site. So this of course is the famous uh, Hubble model, uh, first proposed by Hubbard, uh, Goods Wheeler and uh, Canon Maury uh, in the 60s. Um, so uh, the Hubble model uh, with those two terms, you know, the T tends to delocalize electrons and the U tends to um, localize electrons can uh, easily explain um, why some material is a metal and some is an insulator when we have uh, half field band. So when the interaction becomes uh, strong uh, up to some critical value, then it's too much to pay uh, to have them delocalized. So in this case, you'll form a mod insulator. So the Hubble model is a, a very simple toy model, um, but it's um, uh, very uh, useful and powerful and um, the reason is because it start to capture essential physics of uh, many important you know, correlated phenomena, uh, including high TC, quantum magnetism, 
uh, and and this uh, mode transition I just described, you know, transition from metal to insulator to insulator at half filling. But the simplicity of the Hubble model, when written down, is quite deceptive. Uh, the model can be accurately uh, solved only in the case of uh, 1D. Um, therefore, you know, any uh, physical realization of the model in 2D or 3D uh, is very important as a quantum simulator. That's uh, what uh, people call it. Um, so the idea of quantum simulation actually came from a Feynman from the 80s. Um, so it's, it's an analog simulator. So we can use one controllable quantum system to study less controllable or accept, acceptable uh, quantum system. Um, so there are um, active uh, research in the field of uh, cold atoms in optical lattices and uh, trap ions to uh, model or to simulate uh, condensed matter uh, problems, you know, uh, involving uh, condensed matter models, uh, including the Hubble model. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today um, is um, those moray materials made of uh, two-dimensional uh, materials, uh, two D materials. Um, and, and you know, as, as you see a little bit later uh, in the talk, uh, the moray materials have uh, a different energy and the length scale uh, compared to a real solid or cold atoms. Um, and, and this is the new solid state platform um, where we um, hope uh, we'll be able to, you know, look at the, the correlation um, in, in some uh, complementary way or, uh, okay. So um, Mori actually is uh, everywhere. Um, as, as you can see in those two pictures, um, interference pattern emerge if you put two identical sheets at some uh, small twist angle, or you put uh, two uh, sheets with uh, different uh, lattice constants. Um, why this is important for correlation is because the moray materials introduce new length scale, uh, energy scale. So uh, we can just see this uh, in this uh, uh, back, uh, back of envelope um, uh, calculation. So let's say uh, we have a moray uh, with lattice constant of uh, A, um, then the interaction energy can be estimated as uh, one over distance and some dielectric constant. Uh, the bandwidth or the kinetic energy uh, of the lowest electronic mini band is inversely proportional to the separation square. Then the correlation, the measure of correlation, um, which is um, uh, measured by the ratio of uh, interaction energy to the uh, bandwidth uh, is proportional to mass and the distance. And for separation on the order of 10 nanometer, uh, we can get this ratio to be on the order of you know, five or fewer times. So this immediately uh, puts um, the electrons in a moray super lattice uh, in a strong correlation regime. Um, we can access a very large um, phase diagram uh, in, in a single device, hopefully, uh, because of the high uh, controllability and the tunability. So for example, because we are dealing with the 2D sheets, you can build the capacitors and use electrical gates to change the doping density, like it's changing the x-axis here. Uh, you can use other means to tune the interaction strength and because electrons are coupled to phonons, you can access a wide range of a temperature uh, on different energy scales. So basically you can uh, map out, for example, this entire phase diagram uh, using a single device and that's the power. Okay, so um, perhaps um, the, uh, you know, most 
um, illustrious example of uh, moray materials is this uh, magical angle twist baleography. Um, so the idea of uh, uh, strong correlation by twisting two layers of graphene has been uh, predicted and has also been seen in um, scanning tonally microscopy uh, measurements. But um, it mostly rem has remained a theoretical until uh, 2018 um, when uh, the MIT group published the two nature papers reporting uh, observation of a strongly, you know, of correlated insulating state at half filling. And then when you dope away from that, you see a superconductivity. Um, and the field got uh, more exciting, you know, um, like a year or two ago um, when uh, David Gope Gordon's group uh, discovered uh, ferromagnetism uh, in the graphing system and later on, people have seen quantum anomaly Hall effect. And the recent uh, collaboration between Stanford and uh, Berkeley on ABC uh, trilayer graphing, you know, has uh, pushed this into um, even more exciting uh, frontiers. So basically, uh, what's happening here, uh, for example, for the magical angle twist baleo graphing. Uh, we can understand the, the basic electronic band structure, well, from, from zero's order approximation, just by uh, considering two honeycomb from top and the bottom layer, uh, they um, hybridize. Um, so when the hybridization energy uh, becomes comparable to the uh, bandwidth here or the kinetic energy, then the band becomes flat which induces a strong correlation. But this happens um, only at uh, very close to uh, this magic angle around uh, one degree. So, um, you know, everybody in the twisted graphing business uh, knows the character of device is different for each device, just like uh, our students maybe or ourselves. So, um, so we are thinking about uh, whether uh, we can uh, come up with a system with a wider range of magic angle. You know, can you have a, a wider tuning rate, tuning range? Uh, can we uh, observe uh, much more robust correlation physics um, or isolate a single band? And the answer um, actually um, is yes. Um, and we just need to work with something with um, a band gap to start with, unlike uh, graphing. So let me just uh, say a few words about the uh, monolayer semiconductors um, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, discuss quite a lot today. Um, so this is a group uh, from a um, group of uh, um, transition metal dicocogenites uh, made of uh, transition metal and uh, cogogen atoms uh, in this uh, trigonal prismatic structure. Uh, if you just look it down, uh, it's very similar to graphene, uh, has this hexagonal uh, structure, but now the AB sublattice uh, symmetry is broken. Um, so uh, it was uh, started um, in Tony's lab about a decade ago um, at Columbia. Um, we and others, you know, uh, figured out that, you know, this material um, in the monolayer limit is a direct band gap um, semiconductor. Um, and the band gap occurs at two in equivalent point K and a K prime. Um, and because of the strong uh, spin orbit coupling, uh, the uh, spin degeneracy is lifted and there is um, spin and the valley um, locking uh, to preserve time reversal symmetry. Um, so uh, if you just uh, look at the band structure now, um, it is possible to isolate some uh, moray bands uh, from, for example, uh, the 
uh, orbitals from the uh, valence band of, of this particular material. So then uh, in 2018, um, Alan McDonald's group um, indeed, you know, constructed, um, you know, the, the low energy uh, Hamiltonian for uh, TMD uh, heterobilious. And why heterobilious? Because it just removes other potential uh, degeneracy. So um, in, in this uh, model, you know, um, it is possible to isolate a, a, moray, a single moray band, and you can use two parameters to describe it. Uh, one is, of course, this uh, hopping, um, and the degeneracy here now uh, becomes a valley degeneracy. So the hopping term uh, is on the order of uh, one to 10 milliEV. Uh, it's very sensitive to the twist angle. For small twist angle, you have large period, then you have small t, uh, and a large twist angle, you have um, large hopping. Um, the on-site Coulomb repulsion is determined by how, how how comp, you know how you can uh, confine the uh, uh, electron wave function. So uh, for typical uh, values of uh, uh, Moray potential, you know, so the the winding function size is on the order of one to two nanometer, and that gives you um, on-site uh, repulsion on the order of ten to hundred uh, milliEV. So those energy scales are intermediate between those in real solids and, and in um, cold atom systems. Okay, um, uh, one other thing I would like to mention is, uh, is that you know, compared to graphing, uh, we have a strong layer hybridization between the top and the bottom layers. Uh, here uh, to have a more potential uh, you can have interlayer interaction, you know, which varies uh, in, in the Moray period, or you, you can have a three-dimensional buckling reconstruction or string risk redistribution, but you can also introduce external periodic potential like what we showed in this paper. So you can achieve uh, uh, Moray physics uh, without, um, forming Moray uh, lattice structure. Okay, um, any questions so far? Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss about some examples. I'll pause here for a couple of seconds. Okay, um, we are good. Um, so next I would like to uh, discuss a few uh, examples. Um, on the study of uh, uh, TMD uh, heterobilious. Um, and the first example is to look at, um, you know, what happens at uh, half filling. So that's one electron or one hole per Murray site. So before I do that, um, I first would like to uh, discuss about how we fabricate uh, the devices. So um, we, First, exfoliate uh, thin sheets on um, some flat substrate, and then we use nonlinear optics to determine the crystallographic orientation of each. And uh, we use, you know, this uh, soft stamp to um, sort of pick up and stack them uh, in the desired order and with uh, well-controlled uh, twist angle. Um, and then we can, you know, do uh, photolithography or uh, other lithography to define electrodes. And this is completed by the two gates, um, as, as what I'm showing here. And usually the gates are made of uh, uh, field layer graph graphite, um, and the insulator is uh, boronitrite. And we can do uh, optical measurements uh, with uh, spatial resolution on the order of uh, half to one micron. Uh, we can look at the in-plane transport and we can also measure uh, capacitance and that, that corresponds to the electronic compressibility. Um, and this work uh, is led by um, former postdoc Yang Hao Tan, who is a, a professor at Zhejiang University in China now. 
So first, uh, let's take a look at the in-plane transport properties. Uh, what I'm showing here is the uh, in-plane resistance as a function of filling factor. Uh, let's not worry about what's going on at very low doping density, uh, low temperature, and this is mostly due to contact resistance. Okay, so I would like you to pay attention to those two uh, peaks. Uh, those peaks become more pronounced at low temperature, so they are showing some kind of an insulating behavior. So the insulating state at the filling factor two. Uh, the filling factor two here means uh, two electrons or two holes per Murray site. And that's one completely filled Murray mini band. And this is uh, a simple band insulator. Okay? Uh, at a filling factor one, that half filled band, uh, without interaction, we expect to see a metal, uh, but we're seeing insulating state. So that tells us that uh, interaction is strong and likely we are seeing some kind of uh, mod insulating state. So I would like to also mention that uh, this uh, uh, correlated insulating state uh, has also been observed uh, in TMD systems uh, by other group, uh, including this work from Berkeley, uh, this is from Columbia University, and this is from ETH Zurich. One very important uh, ingredient for mod insulating state is actually the magnetic interaction, because after the charges are localized, uh, the uh, ground state and the, the low energy state actually is determined by the magnetic interaction between those localized local moments. So this is something uh, we, we're going to look at next. Um, so uh, to gain insight into the magnetic interaction, uh, we would like to measure the magnetic susceptibility, uh, in particular, the temperature dependence of the magnetic susceptibility. So uh, the, temp the, the magnetic susceptibility of uh, local moments uh, upon cooling uh, diverges. And uh, in paramagnetic material, it diverges at uh, zero temperature. Uh, in ferromagnetic materials, it diverges at uh, some finite temperature, which is a Curie temperature. And in antiferromagnetic material, if you extend the temperature dependence, and it should diverge at some negative uh, temperature. Um, and then you can look at one over chi, you know, and see where they intersect. So uh, experimentally, uh, we have a, a little bit of problem uh, of measuring the uh, magnetic susceptibility of uh, of this local moments because. Uh, we have an area about uh, micron square, and uh, you know we have a total of about like ten thousand spins, and they are embedded in a large magnetic background. Um, and optics actually uh, provides the selectivity and the sensitivity to probe, uh, you know, those ten thousand spins embedded. So um, because of uh, the um, uh, optical selection rules, um, the K and the K prime value uh, in uh, monolayer TMDs are exclusively coupled to left-handed and the right-handed light uh, when you excite them on resonance. Uh, therefore, the difference between left and the right polarized light absorption uh, gives you a measure of the imbalance between the two valleys. In other words, gives you an idea about the valley um, uh, polarization or magnetization. So uh, here's a measurement. Uh, we are looking at uh, the difference between left and right, which you call it magnetic circular dichroism, as a function of a magnetic field. So um, for small magnetic fields, um, this MCD increases linearly. And then uh, around like a half Tesla-ish, um, the uh, MCD saturates. So what's happening here is that um, um, you know this this um, excitonic resonance uh, 
uh, sees uh, the applied magnetic field and also the magnetic field generated by you know the local local moments, um, and the response you know from the local moments actually is uh, almost two orders of magnitude bigger than the the bare uh, exciton response you know the electron. So uh, we can look at the slope here, um, and that slope is the, uh, the magnetic accessibility. So if we look at the temperature dependence and uh, do the fit, um, I, I described to you, um, the high temperature uh, magnetic accessibility you know, um, hits the uh, temperature axis at negative one Kelvin. So this negative one Kelvin, um, tells us two things. One, it's antiferromagnetic. And the second, the magnetic exchange interaction is on the order of uh, 0.1 milliEV. And this energy scale is fully consistent with the saturation field uh, about half Tesla I showed earlier. So, um, and this, this, this result is uh, fully consistent uh, with uh, the uh, expectation of a mod insulator in the limit of when u is much bigger than t. Uh, in this case, um, the t is a small perturbation. You know? So uh, exchange can occur in this uh, super exchange channel. You, know, you can hop over and hop back. So when the two spins are parallel, this process is forbidden. And only when they are anti-parallel, in other words, anti-ferromagnetic aligned, uh, you can have this super exchange. Um, and the, the measured, you know, one Kelvin uh, temperature can also tell us uh, about the T square over U ratio. Um, and, and then from the transport measurement, we already have an idea about how big U is, uh, then you can determine T and, and indeed, you know, this system is in the large U over T limit, it's about 10. And all the parameters are consistent, you know, with with uh, uh, theoretical modeling. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? I will. Um, okay. So um, now, with uh, you know this combined transport and optical measurement to look at you know the transport and the magnetic properties, we can pretty much explore. Uh, this this uh, phase diagram of, of different filling factor, right? Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of the, the studies, you know, you can uh, uh, look up in, in this paper. Uh, what I'm going to do is to focus on this, this area, the fractional filling range and, uh, and discuss a little bit more. So the question is, um, you know, this, this measurement, of course, uh, is, is not quite reliable because of a large uh, contact resistance, but it does show some sub-features. So the question is, are there other insulating states you know, in this doping range? Um, so uh, before I tell you, uh, our results, um, I would like to um, digress a little bit, uh, tell you about the technique we uh, developed uh, in order to probe uh, what's going on at the fraction of filling, um, because there, you know, because of the uh, contact issue, you know, uh, transport um, cannot give us um, uh, anything reliable. So um, the technique we developed uh, is, um, we call it exciton sensing. So uh, this is something that you know Tony's lab has uh, pioneered. You know in the last decade. Um, so just imagine we have a single sheet of semiconductor uh, because the dielectric screening is uh, substantially reduced. So the electron hole can bind very strongly together. And the binding energy is on the order of a half EV, you know, if, if um, you don't have anything else, you know, surrounding it. Um, uh, the uh, spectrum um, 
resembles, you know, uh, reverb states uh, you see in two dimensional hydrogen atom. So you have 1s, 2s, you know, 3s, till you hit the continuum, which is the bank gap. Um, so this binding energy is very sensitive to uh, the dielectric environment uh, because of the screening effect I, I mentioned. And uh, we've also, the community also knows like the, the exciton binding, the exciton ball radius. Uh, so like for different states, you know, we know the extent of, of uh, the, the wave functions. So, um, because of uh, those size, you know, is, is a much, much bigger than the thickness of a monolayer, then one would imagine that, you know, if we place a, a metallic uh, sheet, you know, next to it, then you expect to see a very large screening, then the binding energy will be smaller and that the absorption strength amplitude will be smaller too. And if you have an insulating layer next to it, uh, the screening will be much less than we expect to see large binding energy and also a large absorption amplitude. Um, and you know, in, in this system, uh, because both uh, the electron hole continuum, which is the band gap, and also the binding energy, both uh, are kind of screened by uh, the, the, the that dielectrical environment, they both shift. Uh, the end result is that for uh, strong screening, we would expect, for example, this uh, n equal to two uh, state to redshift. And uh, if it's less screening, it's a kind of a blue shift. Um, so this is uh, the work of um, uh, former postdoc Yang Shi, uh, who is with um, um, Institute of uh, Physics uh, in Beijing now. Um, and this is the device um, he designed. So we put a spacer of one nanometer or a few nanometer between our uh, moray material and also a single sheet of a semiconductor. And in this case, it's a piece of uh, tungsten selenide. Um, and then we can add a gates so uh, those gates will uh, introduce charge only into the sample, but not into the sensor uh, because how we design the band alignment. Uh, the sensor remains charge neutral for the entire uh, measurement. And because of the spacer, you know, is on the order of nanometer or so, uh, we determine that N X2 state is the most sensitive one. So we're going to look at uh, the shift of the n equals two state and also the absorption amplitude. And here's the result. So uh, in this contour plot, you see uh, the 2s state from the sensor as function of photon energy and also gate voltage. So the gate voltage correspond to a doping into moray super lattice. So the positive uh, voltage means we're putting electron into the Moray super lattice and negative means we're putting holes into the Moray super lattice. Um, the color means, blue means more absorption and the yellow red means less. So you can see here, you know, the background uh, somewhere here, this whole background is compressible. So it's metallic state. And then on top of that, we have plenty of insulating states. So uh, the most prominent ones is the one with no doping. That's when the Fermi level is inside the, the um, heterobilayer band gap. Um, filling equals to one, that's the mod insulating state I told you about. And the filling equal two, that's the band insulator. And then we, we have, sorry, we have, you know, the, on the other side is the same story. But then in between, you see a bunch of um, blue shift, you know, a bunch of insulating states. So what are those guys? Uh, we are dealing with uh, Coulomb uh, interaction. Uh, so this is the long range. So um, the, 
next neighbor, next next nearest neighbor uh, cooling interaction um, is also important. Uh, you know, especially when uh, the two gates are far away, so they are not much screen. So as long as the gates like uh, tens of nanometer away, uh, the, this separation is on the order of eight nanometer. So the screening is, is not significant. So long range coulomb is important. Um, and, and it seems that we need to uh, take that into account. Um, so uh, my colleague uh, Vaid Alsa um, did a classical Monte Carlo simulation and uh, he find uh, those um, stable charge configurations that minimize long range uh, Coulomb interaction. Um, so you can see the uh, electron configurations on this uh, underlying um, triangular uh, lattice so black means the field state, you know, electron there, uh, the empty holes means, you know, no charge there. So uh, charges, um, they try to minimize long range to avoid the simultaneous occupancy of uh, neighboring uh, sites. And as you can see here, you know, uh, one third and two thirds, uh, they just have a particle hole symmetry. So they, they have the, the same energy here. And we have uh, a stable configuration at half to fifth has some kind of uh, dimer uh, structure, a quarter and, and so on. Um, remarkably, um, when we uh, put, you know, the Monte Carlo results and the experiment together, we were able to find every single state we find in the experiment and also in, in the um, classical uh, Monte Carlo. So those states now um, become clear. So they are electron uh, crystals. Um, you can call them either um, generalized Wigner crystals or uh, charge density waves, depending on uh, how important, you know, this, uh, um, the T term is, you know, how much charge is spread out uh, into uh, neighboring sites. Um, so um, with, with this technique, now um, we can study, uh, for example, um, thermal annealing, quantum annealing, you know, or different uh, phase transitions. Um, I would like to uh, point out that if you look at half, Two fifth and three fifth states, um, they clearly uh, break rotational symmetry, and that's something uh, we've been able to uh, optically uh, probe by looking at uh, anisotropy and to be able to measure the um, orientation of the anisotropy axis and the domains. And if you are interested, you can find out more in this paper. And I just learned uh, today from. Um, yeah, David, that you know, they have seen um, something similar in uh, twisted the bilia graphing uh, above a little bit above the uh, the magical angle, um, and and it seems that you know this stripy uh, electronic states uh, are more common than uh, you would think. Um, and of course, you know, uh, this, this, uh, the magnetic properties of this system are also uh, very interesting. Uh, now you can uh, think about those as, uh, you know, local moments, uh, they can hop, and that means you have magnetic exchange interactions. Uh, and uh, the different states uh, with different filling numbers uh, give us a wide range of geometry, for example, 1D versus 2D, or different frustrations for, for the lattice. You know, we can have non-frustrated honeycomb lattice, and we can also have frustrated uh, triangular or uh, co cognomy uh, uh, lattice. So this is something uh, still ongoing. Um, and and um, I, I will also pause for a couple of seconds just in case there are questions. Okay, so um, 
So now I'll, I'll just uh, uh, move on to my um, last topic. Um, so uh, the, the last question is, um, can we uh, tune the interaction? And um, in, in this experiment, we are going to uh, revisit some um, old concept uh, about metal insulating, uh, insulated transition. And I'm going to uh, focus on one filling factor, which is uh, you know, one particle per, per site. Um, I've already uh, explained that um, by increasing the uh, interaction, uh, we can have a metal to insulated transition. So at the low temperature, at zero temperature to be uh, specific, um, for small interaction, we have Landau Fermi liquid. And on large U limit, we have a mod insulator. So this evolution of uh, Landau Fermi liquids into, let's say, non-magnetic uh, mod insulator uh, with increasing um, interaction, uh, interaction U um, is one of the most puzzling uh, quantum phase transitions in physics. Um, and with the frustrated triangular lattice and the two-dimensional uh, uh, platform, um, you know, we, we think that we might be able to uh, tackle this, this old problem. Because of frustration and also the 2D case, um, other ordering, for example, magnetic ordering can be uh, suppressed. So then we can have a, a quantum phase transition without any obvious symmetry breaking. And it has been predicted that, you know, this is kind of an interesting uh, regime uh, where you can uh, uh, look for quantum spin liquids, for example, uh, predicted by uh, this uh, Berkeley uh, uh, theoretical uh, numerical modeling. Okay, so um, let's get to, to the ex experimental sites. Um, so we would like to tune the interaction strength. So in other words, U over T ratio. Um, one way to do that is to uh, change the uh, twist angle, you know, um, large twist angle, we have a smaller period and we have a large uh, hopping. Uh, but, you know, this cannot be uh, continuous. So we are looking for other ways to tune uh, U over T continuously. And this is uh, one, um, you know, it seems to work. Okay, so let me just explain how, how that works. So uh, this is a pair of uh, Molly telluride and a tungsten uh, soft selenide. Um, uh, sorry, there's a, there's a typo, WSE2. Um, so we, and, and the, the uh, lattice mismatch in this case is uh, bigger. It's about 7%. So the Molly period is smaller. And that helps with the uh, putting the context because uh, filling factor one means we have higher um, charge density. So uh, we're going to apply a large outer plane electric field as uh, what I'm showing here. And uh, uh, kind of the main effect of, of this outer plane uh, electric field is to the uh, band offset between those two materials. And uh, when you have uh, different band offset, the electronic uh, coupling between the two layers can be changed and that will vary the uh, Moray uh, potential. So um, let's say you uh, make uh, the field along such a direction that you make the Moray potential smaller than um, the hopping you know, between the two neighboring sites can be increased. Uh, of course, at the same time, the confinement of the um, one year function will be uh, a little bit less, but that will be the next order uh, effect. So mostly we are changing the bandwidth or the kinetic energy uh, while leaving the on-site Coulomb uh, repulsion uh, roughly constant. So by applying uh, out of playing electrical fields, we can tune 
uh, the ratio uh, between uh, U, U and a T. And this is work uh, led uh, by um, those two uh, gentlemen, um, postdoc Ting Xing Li, Shen Wei Jiang, and uh, graduate student Li Zhongli. Oh, I should also mention that uh, uh, there is a similar work uh, from uh, Paso Party's group uh, at at Columbia, you know, so they look at the twisted bilayer uh, WIC2. It's in this archive. So here's the result. Uh, we measured the uh, full point uh, uh, transport property um, as a function of temperature at 300 millikelvin while we're changing the vertical uh, electrical field. And the filling is fixed at one particle per mole site. And as you can see here, by changing the electrical field a little bit, the transport properties can change by orders of magnitude. So, you know, from here to here, we see uh, four orders of magnitude change in terms of resistance. So, if you look at this group of, of data, uh, when you increase temperature, uh, resistance drops. So this is some kind of insulating behavior, right? And this is the case I um, described earlier to you uh, when we have mod insulating state. But if you look at those curves, um, when you increase temperature, actually the resistance increases. So this is a metallic. So we do have a transition from insulator to metal when we increase uh, electrical field. But what about the nature of this uh, transition? Oh, uh, that's another thing. Um, so we can um, rescale um, all the um, resistance versus temperature curve and uh, collapse them into two groups. Uh, you know, this group is the insulating uh, phase and this group of uh, metallic phase. And down to 300 millikelvin, we have not seen any hysteresis. Okay. Um, so, um, at very low temperature, you know, the, this, this um, transition, uh, the, the two phases um, are well known. Um, as, as I showed earlier, you know, um, very large U, we have mod insulator, and very small U, we have Landau Fermi liquid. So, on the uh, insulating side, uh, if we look at the uh, resistance versus temperature, um, we can describe them very well by the activation uh, behavior. And if you fit that activation uh, behavior, you can extract the charge gap. And this is the charge gap as function of uh, electrical field. So when you approach this critical field, we see the charge gap closes continuously. And, and this, uh, the scaling, you know, exponent is on the order of 0.6. Um, on the other hand, if we go from the metallic side and try to approach this uh, critical point, um, I should go back. Uh, you see here, you know, resistance goes like a square of temperature and that's a typical um, uh, Fermi liquid behavior. And that coefficient is, uh, uh, gives you the, um, the, the effective mass. So uh, that, that coefficient, the square root of that coefficient um, tells you about the, the effective mass and the mass diverges you know, when we approach that critical point. And we've also measured the, uh, the hall density um, for uh, a range of the field. Uh, pretty much for the entire range, uh, the hall density stays constant, uh, except, you know, very, very close to the critical point, you know, a small magnetic field can uh, induce metal insulated transition. So, so uh, this range cannot be measured very well. So what we have here is uh, divergent uh, quasi-particle mass, but the Fermi surface stays as constant. Um, I also uh, told you about magnetic susceptibility measurement that we can do using uh, uh, magne uh, magnetocircular dichroism. And this is the result for this particular case. 
And the, the message here is that the susceptibility changes continuously, even at the lowest temperature, uh, which is much below the, the, um, the U term, T term, and also the magnetic interaction. So at the low temperature, uh, magnetic susceptibility is, is, is smooth. So just uh, putting those three pieces together, uh, we think um, our results are consistent with uh, this universal critical theory of continuous uh, metal insulated transition from uh, Landau Fermi liquid uh, into non-magnetic uh, mod insulator in, in 2D. And this could also be the, the 120 degree near order, but most likely it's non-magnetic. So, um, uh, with this, um, I would like to uh, wrap up my, my talk. So I hope uh, I have convinced you that the semiconductor Moray system uh, provides a unique platform to study uh, model many body Hamiltonians, including uh, Hubble model uh, with, with highly tunable parameters. Uh, I talk about the three examples. Um, Antiferromagnetic mod insulating state at half filling when U over T is big. And also when U over T is big, uh, we have seen um, correlated insulating state at a fractional filling of lattice. And this is something that has never been observed before, uh, you know, in, in any marine materials. And uh, I also talk about the possibility of tuning U over T and observe uh, continuous small transition in, in this um, 2D uh, semiconductor Moray superlattices. Uh, but of course, you know, there are many open questions. Um, I mentioned that, you know, this is a good platform to uh, look for exotic magnetic states such as spin liquid, uh, we haven't seen anything yet, you know, so this is um, a work in progress. Um, and another interesting aspect is, you know, can you um, engineer some topological properties into those non-topological material? Um, um, the, the answer is yes, you know, there's this hope to, to achieve that. And, and the last thing I would like to mention that, you know, we've studied um, fermions, you know, electrons in, in a lattice. Uh, but this also gives us a good platform uh, to think about to introduce bosons. In this case, would be electron hole pairs and study, you know, bose hubber in, in this, this particular uh, platform. So with this, uh, I'll finish. Um, and, you know, I'll be happy to take uh, questions if there are any. All right, so thank you uh, very much, Professor Shen, for, for a great talk. Everyone feel free to unmute yourself or, or with uh, reactions, give uh, Professor Shen a round of applause. Um, there's plenty of time for questions. I, I see um, there are a couple already. Uh, so I think, uh, Bai Wang, you, you, were, you were first with your hand up. So um, go ahead and uh, ask away. Thank you. Uh... Really, really nice talk. Thank you very much. Uh, I have two quick questions. The first one was about the last part of the mod transition. When you apply gate, um, do, you, uh, do you also tune the carry density or are you at the half filling of the band? Okay, so I have a quick question. Uh, we have two gates. Uh, which can independently uh, vary the electric field out of plane and also the doping density. So we tune those together to keep uh, filling factor fixed at half. So the, all the data I show is uh, for fixed filling factor, you know, half, half filling. Um, I see. Uh, my second question is for this uh, quantum or this simulation of uh, model Hamiltonians. Uh, is there a possibility for a square lattice um, model? Yeah, sure. Um, so I copied this slide um, out of a, a review article, you know, by, um, led by uh, Andrea Rubio, you know. So um, there are 
actually, you know, other uh, material systems that uh, uh, potentially can uh, give you um, square or most like a rectangular. So one particular example is uh, tungsten telluride, um, the, the T, one T face, you know, so if you stack those two, you get something closer to, you know, a, a rectangular uh, lattice. Uh, so far, uh, I, I think all the studies of uh, TMD Murray are triangular or oh. hexagonal triangular. I, see. I just quickly follow up. So um, you have the valley degeneracy. So when you have a square, say Murray, do you also worry about the four corners actually not equivalent? Okay. So, uh, um, you know, valley, they, they are for, well, maybe, maybe for the square, it would be different valley. Um, so the KK prime valley is for hexagonal and a triangular, specifically. Did, did I answer your question or you had something else in mind? Oh, I just, uh, I just uh, remember hearing uh, that from calculation seems when you have square more a uh, lattice, uh, there is uh, there is also uh, the 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 four corners actually are not necessarily uh, equivalent sites. Uh, that's that's quite quite possible, and and yeah. that gives you you know additional degree of uh, uh, freedom. You know, tuning up. You can also make uh, so for example, you can have T. You know, the hopping uh, along different direction, different and. I only focus on um, real T, and T can also be a complex, right? Nobody says it has to be real. And, and that will introduce uh, much, much richer uh, phases and, and phenomena, I believe. Although, you know, nothing has been demonstrated yet. Thank you very much. All right, so we have another hand raised. Uh, oh, Paige, you wanna go ahead and ask? Yeah, I do want to. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, probably a follow up to uh, Bai Wang's question a minute ago. Uh, so you mentioned that you're exactly at half band filling when you're doing the metal insulator transition work. And I'm wondering how do you how do you confirm that or establish that? You know, do you, do you okay. is that like a voltage equals zero point or something or? You know? <laughs> no, actually we do 2D map. We have, um the entire um, uh, measurements we've, we've done. So we, we tune um, the two um, gates, right? So we have 2D map of uh, right. Right. the yeah. top, and, yeah. The in phase and out of phase, but how, what's the signature of being at half? Um, okay, uh, so we, we do the measurements by varying density and we also do the measurement by varying electric field. So we have the entire uh, phase, everything we, we measure. And then the data I showed you is like cut from this 2D map when we fix the doping. Does right, this but, make sense? But how, how do you know the doping is not like a half full plus or minus epsilon? That's, I guess that's uh, my okay, question. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, um, um, so we know the, um, the, the gate, so, so let's say we, we first uh, determine the capacitance of uh, those gates. So we know exactly like if you apply certain voltage, you get into certain doping range. So that can be done uh, very um, accurately. So the question is, you know, the spread in terms of uh, uh, doping density. So you know, like a gate control, you can control very, very accurately. Uh, there are some defects, for example, um, and that's something, you know, we uh, estimated um, it's like one, two orders of magnitude lower than the, the uh, half filling density. So um, the, the spread is, is uh, very, very small. Let me put uh -huh. it. Thank you. Other questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, or if you're shy, you can type it into the chat and I'm happy to read them all. 
could, could you go back to the slide with the uh, data from the metal insulator transition? Yeah, there. Um, so near that, there seems to be non-monotonic yes. behavior. Yes. Um, uh, is there an explanation for that? Um, I'll try. <laughs> So uh, the question is about this, for example, this point, you know, the resistance first the increases, for example, here uh, as square of the temperature yeah. and then somewhere here, it becomes linear and then reaches a peak. And then after that, it decreases, right? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the, the entire phase diagram prepared, but, you know, so the, the uh, so this actually is something um, that, um, uh, people have seen in um, in helium. Um, what is this effect? Pomeranchik effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, that's what I was thinking. It looks like you that the insulator has is the higher entropy phase. Exactly, exactly. You're right. So I guess I don't need to get into detail uh, to to. Oh, that's very try. interesting. Uh, on the other hand, that probably has some impact on what you think the magnetic character of the insulating state is. That no, entropy that is presumably, us. what? Yeah. yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, the entropy is presumably spin entropy of the insulating exactly. state. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we think they are not uh, magnetic or ordered. It's non-magnetic uh, mm. model. The spin liquid would be worse. Spin liquid okay. is gapped. Well, spin liquid, we don't know how to probe it. <laughs> no, but the, that's a low entropy state. This looks like just a disor thermally disordered magnet. Um, so uh, spin liquid actually is in, let me, let me just uh, go back to this. Okay. So, um, so this is, of course, is a, a simulation. Um, yeah, and, but the, and, the spin liquid state that they yeah. found had a spin gap. Yeah, but but this no also gapless. The the Zelotel picture uh, paper yeah. concluded that it was gapped. Um, I guess this has not been converged. <laughs> okay. Anyway, a gapped state is a low entropy state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Felipe Jornada. Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chief, for the really uh, interesting talk. Uh, my question I have is on the uh, part of where you have the uh, sensor setup, where you have the uh, uh, you know, twisted material with a, yes, exactly this one. Um, uh, so it's very clear that the, uh, you know, you're really sensing some order phase uh, and that screening could be. Uh, of course, changing the axon binding energy, but uh, does the actually the amount by which there is a uh, red or blue shift in each of the uh, uh, axon peaks does that correspond to a uh, different feeling factors? Uh, it just seems like the trend is not monotonic with the feeling factor. Okay, um, so Felipe, if I uh, if I understood you correctly, you are talking about the. Um, um, the amount of blue shift. Exactly, yeah. for all so, the different. Uh... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I, of course, did not tell you the entire story of what's going on here, uh, but, you know, we, we do, uh, so, um, you know, under, under certain approximations, you can think of the amount of blue shift is sort of proportional uh, to the gap size. So those different states have different gap size. So for example, uh, one third and two thirds have the largest gap size for those uh, fractional filling state. And this uh, equals zero, you know, has of course the, the largest gap in, in the system and the mod insulating state has the next uh, large gap. Um, but, you know, this, this is a monotonic, but it's not linear. It's a, you know, very, very kind of, slow um, change. Um, and the other thing I didn't mention, you know, for example, um, uh, for those of you who look at this uh, very carefully, you see that this blue sort of spill out of that 
a new equizero state. And this is something uh, we understand what's going on. It's the exciton in the sensor and the electron C in the Moray system. They form um, many body quasi uh, state, quasi particle state, you know, the porons. And, and, you know, so, and you also see uh, kind of uh, those features and they are like the replica of, of those states. And what's happening there actually is the Moray super lattice imprint some of its periodic potential on the sensor. And that's why we see uh, those features. So actually this spectrum is, is uh, uh, very rich. And, um, you know, um, I, I think uh, some theoretical uh, guidelines uh, uh, definitely is needed to understand the, this very complicated, you know, many body states. Thank you. All right, so other questions? All right, if not, then let's uh, thank Professor Sean again for a great talk.